everyone, Malvi here. In this video, I simply wanted to share with you something I got to do at my school. One of my teachers asked me to do a small presentation about bees in front of one of my classes. I was very excited when she told me this, so here is my small presentation. Enjoy! takes about 16 days for her to hatch, the worker, which it takes 21 days to hatch, and the drone, which it takes um, uh, about 24 days to hatch. So that's the male, and these two are the queens. I mean, these two are the girls. So, bees are pollinators. Some of them do make honey, and some of them uh, have stingers, but yeah, and, and some of them live alone. And others, they uh, live in a hive, or sometimes, kind of like the bumblebee, they live underground with a colony, and also they're fuzzy. So uh, the way the fuzzy is that when, because when they're like flying, they have like, uh, they get like electric on them, so that makes the, uh, the hair on them get like really poofy. So then once they land on the flower, all of the pollen, like little pollens, like kind of dust just goes on the bee and it's like attached to her. So yeah. And what kinds of bees are there? So there's the honey bee. There are some different kinds of bumblebees. Some one of them is the rusty patch bumblebee and the white-tailed bumblebee. And there are about 25,000 different species around the world. And out of this, 800 live in Canada. There's the native bees. There's the mason bee. The little cute little guy. Um, a leaf cutter bee and a metallic green bee, one of our Canadian endangered species. So bees, wasps, and hornets. Now, the queen or the bees, the queen can't start her colony bee by herself. She needs bees to take care of her, and it takes a very long time to have a, a really strong colony. And they also sometimes they live in a hive and they uh, are in. Sometimes they can be inside a hollow tree, so that's the difference between a bee and wasp and hornets. Is that a queen can take um, can start her nest by herself, so she doesn't need any bees. I mean, they don't. She doesn't need any um, of her kind. They're very prolific, so there can be more. And the nest, it can be made out of clay or mud. So if you know how the, if you see if you see outside and there's like a wasp nest or a hornet nest, you can see that it's made out of kind of paper. So that's what it's made of. And uh, a bee does collect pollen and honey. And they're fuzzy. And they also have a barbed stinger so that once you get stung, they don't, the, that, the venom just gets in you. And the gut, so their enema, they like kind of like rip apart. So imagine something, some part of you just getting ripped apart once you sting someone. Like, let's just say that. And yeah, so they can die in like at least two hours or like um, three hours. And their pollinator is also that a bee lives in a colony in a, or in a hive. A wasp and hornet, they have smooth stingers, so kind of like that, so it's um, so it doesn't even, so it can sting you several times without dying unless you kill it or something. And their nest is very different compared to the honeybee because honeybees, they live in a hive and wasps just make their nest by themselves. And also, they're carnivores, so they can, they sometimes use hornets, they go after our bees. We have like some queen breeding stations, and uh, we saw like tons of hornets just flying around, and they go and attack our bees, so like the sick ones, or the injured ones, or maybe the weak ones, and then they just kill the bees, and they bring them to their um, hive. Also with the wasps, they just like eat leftovers from 
uh, a bee that was already killed, or sometimes they sometimes go to uh, the honey when they're we're harvesting in the fall. Also, they're more bigger than the, the honey. So the wasp is a little bit more slightly bigger than the wasp, and they're kind of, they're, yeah, they're like really bad. And also, they have scale, they're like, they're, the wasp and a hornet have like a scale like, so they don't have any fur and, or hair, they, they're like really, they're not fuzzy, so yeah, they're like really bad to our bees. And why are bees important? So the, bee, the reason why bees are important is that they pollinate our crops and garden, and like a third of our food is pollinated by bees. And, yeah, and um, bees also uh, pollinate, they do the, bio, the biodiversity of our plants, and they also, when they pollinate, they provide fruit and vegetables, so they have good qualities, they have a really large size, and they have a large amount. So this one, you can see this corn wasn't really great pollinated, so it isn't really good, um, doesn't have really good quality, it isn't really big enough, and yeah, that's why it's so really important. And what is happening to our bees around the world? So there are many things that bees are dying or disappearing. Some of them are the use of pesticides and GMO, genetically modified organisms. Also, there are varroa mites. So these are the that they come, uh, they attack our bees, and it's really hard. If one of them gets on one of our bees, it's really hard for that bee to like just try to take it off. So some they like they're really bad for our bees, and also they don't have any homes. They they don't have any homes, so that that's how they're like they can like, die or that. And monoculture. So monoculture is just. Uh, the continuous growing of one type of crop. So imagine you just eating a burger for the rest of your life. That's why the, the, the bees are dying. They just have like one specific plant and yeah, just, they just will have that one specific plant for the rest of their life. So yeah, imagine you just eating uh, eat one burger, like the burgers for the rest of your life. You, uh, that's quite bad because you just need, you need uh, vitamins, you need other good stuff in your body. So yeah, that's why I do mine. And what can we do to help them? So what we can do to help them is inviting them, uh, inviting them to your homes, just try to like make a home for them. And there is be a host. So this is what my, me and my sister have started this. Uh, it's kind of like a movement. So we're basically just giving out free seeds. It's like a facilia seed. They're very attractive to pollinators. And Basically, it's like once you like take a seed, you can. Uh, there's like at least 10 to 12 seeds in one in a little bag. So you can just plant them around your garden or around or in a pot, and then you can like be, like give it water uh, like once a week, like once a day. And they're very prolific, so they'll come back next year. And they're also they're really hardy, so they don't really need that much care. And it takes at least a month to 45 days to just uh, let it grow. And once you see uh, a pollinator just visiting that flower, you can take a picture of it and then put it on Facebook and on hashtag the other So that's what me and my sister are trying to do. We're trying to invite more pollinators in our garden so that they can, so that's how we're trying to help them. And bees need just two things. They're just very simple ones, food and shelter. That's the only thing that you just need to have, food and shelter. If those things can happen, we can definitely save them. And just for kids. So, this is me and my, this is me just uh, doing a sworn honey that we, uh, sworn of bees that we had. And I just want to say a big thank you to my awesome teacher, as well as my classmates. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.